we've constructed this method for writing an expression that represents that family of functions that are antiderivatives of some given function. So we just find that antiderivative and add that constant plus c. So now we want to expand on this idea to talk about indefinite integrals. So finding an indefinite integral is another way of saying basically what we just did in example three. Find that family of functions that are antiderivatives of f of x or of that given function. So that takes quite a lot of words to say what we can put a little bit more simply by just saying find the indefinite integral or to represent that symbolically we would use this elongated s which is the integral symbol. So this would be read as integrate a function f of x with respect to x. So that integral symbol means integrate or find the antiderivative of and that dx at the end is just telling us which variable to integrate with respect to. For now we're dealing with single variable calculus so that's always going to match the variable and the function but eventually in this course we will get into multivariable calculus and that dx portion will become a little bit more important. Um, it's also going to play a role when we get into some of the integration techniques a little bit later. So we have some different formulas that can be helpful for um, giving us quick methods, excuse me, for integrating different types of functions. So for instance, if we want to find the indefinite integral of k with respect to x, so x means, dx means x is our variable, so k is just a constant in this case, so this would be like the integral of 5. That integral is just going to become kx plus some constant c. And again, we can check that just by taking the derivative of this expression. So the derivative of x is going to be 1, the derivative of k times x, where again, that just represents some number like 5, 12. That's going to become k plus 0, which gets us back to the original expression that we started off with. If we want the indefinite integral of x to the nth power, that's going to become x to the n plus 1 divided by that exact same value, again, plus some constant c. So again, we can check that. to see that we end up with x to the n that we started off with. So the power rule says this exponent will come down as a factor in front. And then our original exponent will get reduced by 1. And we'll divide by that exact same value up, up front. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That n plus 1 just carries over from the original expression. So then n plus 1 over n plus 1 cancels. The derivative of c is 0. So we get x to the n plus 1 minus 1, or just x to the n power, which again is what we started off with. The integral of e to the x will just be e to the x plus c. So again, if we take the integral uh, or take the derivative of e to the x plus c, we'll get e to the x plus 0, which gets us back to that original function we started off with. the integral of 1 over x, which what we want to pay attention to is that this could be rewritten as the integral of x to the negative first power, dx. So if we have 1 over x or x to the negative first power, that indefinite integral will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So checking this, we would have the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, which takes a little bit of theory to explain, but is really essentially the same thing as finding the derivative of the natural log of x without those absolute value bars plus c. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, derivative of c is 0, so we get back to that original function. So if we have 1 over x, or x to the negative first power, 
we just need to keep in mind that's going to be a natural log and that we need those absolute value bars around the x. So those are our basic derivative or uh, basic integration forms. We also have a couple of properties that will help us rearrange some expressions to make them a little, bit, a little bit easier to evaluate. So if we have the integral of some constant times a function, we can rewrite that as k times the integral of f of x dx. So anytime there's a constant multiple, we can just pull that out, set that aside, and just integrate the function. So similar to a property we had with derivatives. And also similar to a property we had with derivatives, if we have multiple functions being added together, we can integrate term by term. So we could rewrite this as the integral of f of x dx. And whether that's plus or minus in the middle, the integral of g of x dx. So we can break some more complicated expressions down to make them a little more manageable. So we can integrate term by term. We can ignore any constant multiples and just look at integrating that function by itself. Um, and then use any of those shortcuts we've established here to find integrals directly.